Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Cinnamon Edgelin, and I'm one of the offshore rig analysts with SGN. And joining us today are my colleague, Matthew Donovan, and Paul Large, our account manager for the Americas. Today, we're going to be discussing the rig contractors continue to ride the wave to higher utilization and day rates. So with that, uh, we'll thank you all for joining us and we'll go ahead and get started. As a quick reminder, we will be making the uh, slides available at the end, uh, along with a link to our YouTube page where you can catch the preview. So in case you weren't able to join me, uh, to join us today, you can uh, always catch this later. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. And again, thank you everyone for joining us today for to the offshore rig market webinar. After a quick stop at our disclaimer, we'll move on to the contents for today's webinar. I'll get us started with the recap of trends from the first half of the year, then Matthew will take the outlook section. We'll begin with the jackup segment. On the top left, you'll see a chart with the current statuses for the 500 jackups in the market. A full 68% or 341 units are under contract. Of the 24 units undergoing repairs, reactivations, or surveys, all but five already have work lined up. In addition, we understand one of the uncommitted five has recently been selected for a job and expects to be finalized soon, further reducing the number of available jackups in the market. The Middle East continues to dominate the jackup market, with about 145 units currently under contract. Plus, there's a steady pipeline of units purchased over the past year that will extend its working count as they finish preparations and crewing and begin their assignments. This situation has led to a tight market, in particular for premium jackups. In turn, we're seeing increased interest in lower spec units in regions where it has become more difficult to find premium rigs. As a result, day rates are increasing globally. On the bottom left of this slide is a table with a few select jackup fixtures from the first half of this year, along with their estimated day rates. The one I'll highlight now is Noble Lloyd Noble, which secured a rate of about 225,000 for harsh environment work off Norway. On this slide, we'll take a look at the climbing utilization rate. When considering units under contract now and those with future commitments, Utilization for marketed jackups has reached 96%, which is extremely tight. The dark blue portion of the bars represents units under contract that month, and the lighter blue bar represents units with future commitments. If you extend the look back to a full year, our data shows that the total jackup supply has only decreased by four, while the number of competitive or marketed units is up by 12, and the number of jackups with contracts has grown by 19. These are all indicators that demand has increased more than the supply has decreased, and previously stacked units are making a comeback, not on speculation, but with contracts in hand. We have one last slide on jackup trends from the first half of this year. This chart is showing new contracts or extensions in dark blue, exercised options in lighter blue, and the red dot represents the average duration of contracts confirmed during that half of the year. If you'll notice the red dot above the first half of 2023 bar, you'll see it comes in at around 12 and a half years. This was the highest jackup contracting level the market has seen in many years. While this chart only goes back to 2020, but before that, the market had already been in a downturn for several years and contracting levels had been much lower. I also want to point out the exercised options you can see more distinctly on the last three bars of the graph. The market tightness has led to increased day rates, so we're seeing more interest in options from operators as a way to hedge a bit against not only rising day rates, but also gives them the first shot at keeping the rig when we are in a market situation in which finding a rig isn't as easy as it was just a few years ago. For the segment of jackups rated for between 400 and 449 feet of water, our rig analytics database has recorded Day rates ranging from 110,000 to 175,000 during the first half of this year. This was also the most popular category of rig to be contracted, securing 44% of jackup awards 
that were announced in the first half of 2023. As mentioned on an earlier slide, the Middle East is where most of the JAPA work is. A full 65% of awards from the first half of this year were for jobs in this region. Another emerging trend are longer term contracts. We recorded six jack up awards in the Middle East for 10 years apiece during the first half of 2023. Far behind the Middle East, 65% of the first half jack up awards come Southeast Asia, which booked about 8% of the awards. It's a quick note here. Already this month, as we're entering the second half of the year, we've reported a day rate of 180,000 for a jack up for work off Australia. This rig will be leaving the UK for this assignment. And that's another trend you'll be hearing more about today. Rigs moving to different regions for term opportunities. Now I'll go over the first half trends from the loader market. So this chart and the next two are set up uh, rather similarly to the jackup charts we just reviewed. Starting with the status chart on the top left, a full 60% of the 209 drill ships and semi-subs are currently under contract. Of the 11 undergoing repairs, reactivations, or surveys, only one is currently uncommitted. However, that one unit is understood to be targeting some likely work. As with the jackups, expect the drilling portion of the chart to increase and the idle portions to decrease. On the right, you'll see the breakdown by region. For floaters, South America continues to lead the way with 31 floaters under contract, and it is poised to continue its growth. The region is led by demand off Brazil, which accounts for the 25 of the region's 31 units. On the select fixture table on this slide, I'll highlight two items. Starting with Transocean Equinox, which is a harsh environment semi-sub. It secured two assignments off Australia, the second of which is shown here at an estimated day rate of about 484,000. This work comes with options that could keep it working off Australia into 2028. Recalling the trend of rigs moving regions for term opportunities, Transocean Equinox is one as it will be leaving Norway. Another that will be leaving its region for term work elsewhere is drillship Noble Fay Kozak. This rig is currently in the US Gulf, but it will be heading to Brazil around the end of this year for a term charter with Petrobras. The day rate is understood to be quite high and includes various services. Our estimate for the clean rate is about 475,000. One last note on this slide is that one of these rigs just arrived at a new region and the other four will soon be heading to different regions. So we expect to see a lot more rig moves uh, as a result of the tight market. Now, similar to the jack up segment, the marketed floater utilization rate is quite high at 87% with certain categories such as the seventh gen drill ships and the sixth generation harsh environment semi subs nearly fully booked for the rest of this year and at least part way into next year. Reviewing the year ago trends, our data shows that floater supply has only dropped by two units, while the competitive or marketed supply has risen by four from a year ago, and the contracted count is up by nine from June 2022. As with the similar jackup slide, these figures show how tight the market is, with few rigs leaving supply and more being reactivated for work. On this slide, I've divided the floater fixture trends and in charts into one for drill ships and one for semi subs. Beginning with the drill ships on the top right, not only is the overall trend for durations increasing, but so are the numbers of options being exercised. Interestingly, for the past few years, the second half of each year has had more contract fixtures than the first half. Should this hold true this year, and given that there are about 17 rig years of tenders open from Petrobras for work off Brazil that are expected to be awarded this year, the drill ship segment is poised to have a strong second half of the year in terms of contracting. For the semi sub chart, the red dots show that durations have also been trending up for this rig segment. As with drill ships and jackups, we're seeing an increase in exercised options. The average day rate chart on the left shows where the market started seeing a distinct rise in day rates in 2022. And this correlates to the rise in exercised options as the market tightened and operators began increasing not only the number of open tenders, but also the terms. As a final point on this slide, we are seeing many of the legacy options that were pre-priced at much lower rates dropping off. 
Instead, recent options are increasingly noted as being at market rates. Even though the operator may still be paying the market rate when they exercise their option, the option does provide them with an opportunity to secure the rig before others can do so. So that's it for the first half of 2023 trends. Matthew will take it here with our outlook. Thank you very much, Cinnamon. Uh, turning now to uh, forecast utilization for jackups. As we mentioned earlier, we're seeing very limited near-term availability of premium jackups worldwide. And we're expecting global utilization for the jackup fleet to remain high over the next several years due to long-term contracts in key areas. Uh, we're seeing hotspots for jackup demand include the Middle East, India, China, Southeast Asia, and Mexico. While there will be more flat demand in these smaller regions, such as the US Gulf of Mexico and South America. And uh, one note with this, while demand remains high, there are some aging units that are likely to exit the competitive jackup fleet over the next several years. Those will largely be replaced by new builds entering the fleet and reactivated units. Looking at the jackup day rate forecast, as we mentioned, average day rates for premium units have risen over 2023. We are expecting this to continue into 2026 for the premium units. And as those rates rise, we are going to see an increase in rates for the vintage and standard jackups as there becomes less availability in the market. And uh, those uh, rigs that previously were not in high demand are able to secure new contracts. Looking to new build jackups, these new jackups have been in high demand as the market tightens. There are currently 22 new build jackups in yards across the globe, with 15 of these units owned by the shipyards. Now, the majority of these new build rigs are expected to be delivered, though delivery dates on some of these could stretch into 2025. And we're expecting many of these units to end up on long term charters in Asia Pacific or the Middle East, while others will fill in gaps in smaller regions uh, while the premium units are occupied elsewhere. We've also seen ONGC in India express interest recently in purchasing new build jackups to refresh their owner operated fleet. And while no new jackups have been ordered this year, we are expecting some new orders over the next several years from the Saudi Aramco Volaris joint venture Arrow Drilling, which has plans to order additional jackups following its first two previous orders. And some of these new jackup orders may indeed be focused on the Middle East market. Looking at the market as a whole, some jackup trends to watch and pointing out that current tenders and pretenders for jackups worldwide total around 88 rig years, so still plenty of upcoming demand for these units. Middle East will remain the largest market for jackups, and we're expecting that ramp up of recently purchased rigs starting multi-year contracts to continue over 2023. Something to note from the Middle East is recently there, we've seen jackups being signed to terms of up to 10 years. Uh, we've already seen five-year contracts in the region and now recently 10-year contracts signed. So that's going to drive continued tightness in premium units in other regions across the globe. Turning to Mexico, local operators there may show some hesitation in signing new long-term contracts for jackups ahead of the upcoming 2024 election, but there is potential for more rigs to move into the country, uh, including from some international operators. In India, there are a large number of tenders open with the state oil company ONGC. The market is watching these closely as day rates here are typically low compared to other areas. So we'll be interested to see where these land in a time of rising day rates. And in West Africa, we've seen some smaller operators report difficulties in securing jackups for shorter term work in West Africa. The long term contracts in other areas and the rising day rates can make it difficult for smaller operators to secure rigs for short one to two well contracts. Turning now to the floating rig outlook. For uh, floating rigs, high spectral ships and sixth generation semi submersibles are basically sold out for the remainder of 2023. We're seeing hot spots for demand around the globe, including Brazil, Australia, and Namibia. 
and such is the uh, tightness in demand right now that there are many programs that will likely need to be delayed due to supply constraints. There's over 90 rig years still open for 2024 start dates, so entirely possible that some of those may be pushed further into the future and rescheduled. And newer activations for cold stacked units are estimated at over one year, so it will be difficult to meet near term supply uh, with reactivations beginning this year. We're seeing operators start to look further ahead with tenders for contract starts in 2026. And drilling contractor Transocean Realty announced a contract for start between late 2025 and the first half of 2026. So with more long-term tenders for floating rigs coming out, we should expect to see more direct negotiations, rig share agreements, and sublets as contractors and operators deal with the tight supply situation. For the floating rig day rate forecast, we've seen leading edge day rates for the largest floating rigs are already in the high 400,000, and that goes both for 7th gen drill ships and for the 6th gen harsh environment semi-submersibles. So we're moving towards that 500,000 mark uh, for day rates. Uh, it's likely we'll see a fixture in that uh, range by late 2023 or early 2024. We're expecting those day rates to continue to rise over the next several years for the uh, top rigs. And as we said earlier, that will also lead to rising day rates uh, for uh, some lower spec units in the market. We'll get new build floating rigs now. The new build supply is fairly limited for these. There's 20 new build floating rigs remaining worldwide. No deliveries in 2023 to date. Uh, nine of these units are owned by the shipyards, though some already have management agreements with drilling contractors in place. And the top level new builds are being bought up. El Dorado Drilling purchased the Pacific Zonda and West Dorado this year, and the remaining seventh gen drill ships are likely to be purchased or bare boat chartered in the near future. Uh, we've seen several new builds bid into tenders already, and the uh, new build Stena Evolution recently secured a five-year contract in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico ahead of its delivery. Uh, however, most of the other new builds have not yet secured contracts ahead of their delivery date. Now, all of these rigs were ordered prior to 2014. We expect most to be delivered within the next one to three years, although some of the drill ships that are below seventh generation or the semi-submersibles that are non-harsh environment units may not be completed as actual drilling rigs. The possibility those could be uh, turned into other assets. And we've not seen drilling contractors or investors yet begin to order new floating rigs for the market. Uh, and as I should point out, the new floating rig orders would not be a solution to near-term demand. Uh, as lengthy design phases, limited shipyard capacity, and supply chain restraints mean that new rigs ordered today would take four to five years to reach the market. And so far, the contractor focus primarily remains on disciplined reactivations, and that includes having uh, clients pay for the reactivation of cold stacked units, and also filling in the gaps between their working rigs contracts. Looking now to specific market, we've got Latin America. Now, Latin America floats a backlog, totals 93 rig years, and 71 of those years do come from Brazil. Uh, Brazil accounts for 17% of global float requirements through 2026 by duration, so a very important market. But we do also have other areas in uh, Latin America, including uh, Guyana, Suriname, Mexico, and Colombia. As I mentioned earlier, Mexico will be voting for a new president in June 2024, so it may soon be difficult for state operator Pemex to sign contracts that run into the next administration. Uh, we're looking at Colombia as a growing natural gas hub with two rig programs contracted to begin in the first half of 2023 and 400 day tender underway for work next year. Looking at the North Sea, uh, as opposed to the rest of the world, uh, activity in the North Sea has been rather slow this year, and semi-submersibles have now begun to leave the North Sea in response to that slow demand in Norway and the UK. Uh, most notably, we've got the Transocean Endurance leaving for Australia, that's now booked into early 2025, and the Equinox also going to Australia for several years. Um, the uh, Hercules has returned to work in Canada, and that will be followed up by activity in Namibia. 
Transocean Barents recently completed work in the UK and will soon start a contract in Lebanon. And the Island Innovator has contracts in West Africa after its current UK contract. So while we currently have 18 semi-submersibles in Norway and 16 in the rest of the North and Barents Sea, uh, that will soon be reduced. Now, the need for harsh environment rigs in the North Sea as a whole and rigs with acknowledgements of compliance for rigs in Norway means there is a limited pool of these units to draw on for work. And many of these units that are being contracted out of the region uh, will not be returning anytime soon. So with the current supply in the region largely booked through 2024, we'll see additional demand in Norway is likely to result in high day rates for new fixtures. And Australia, as we mentioned, has been absorbing rigs from other regions. Currently, three semi-submersibles contracted into 2024 and 2025, and nearly 2.5 rig years uh, of work were booked in the first half of 2023. There's also upcoming planned and possible requirements in the region, mostly for Australia and one for Papua New Guinea. Um, in addition to the rigs currently in the area, Ocean Apex will be returning to Australia this year with over 1.5 years of work lined up. And as we mentioned earlier, the Endurance and Equinox are coming to Australia from Europe. Uh, Transocean Endurance Charter for 240 days plus options. One option's already been exercised and it's now firm into early 2025. And the Equinox has two charters. First for 300 days and the second, 16 wells plus options, could keep it working into 2028. So that will be in Australia for quite some time and be unavailable for uh, harsh environment work in the North Sea. Okay, now moving on to our key takeaways from our presentation today. Uh, rig supply is going to remain tight, especially for premium units, and that goes for both jackups and floating rigs. Um, we're expecting day rates to continue to trend up, but we are seeing continued discounts for long-term work in the market. And then um, some opportunities remain for lower spec floating rigs and jack ups as fewer premium rigs are available. Right, thank you very much everyone for, the present for listening to our presentation today. I think we do have time uh, for some questions. Thank you, Cinnamon Matthew. Um, a lot of uh, great information and insight there from the Essien team. Uh, we have received uh, two or three questions uh, through the presentation, so I'll just go through a couple of them if we, now we've got a couple of minutes. Um, are we on pace to see the same number of rig sales as we did last year? Uh, thanks, Paul. Um, I'll take that one. Um, I, I'd say the answer to that is no, we are not. Um, we saw a lot of jack-up sales uh, specifically for the Middle East last year. Um, those are now going through the process of being absorbed, so mobilized, inspected, reactivated in some cases, and crude. Um, so there's less of a focus on uh, purchasing additional units just now. And we also saw a few large deals go through last year, like the Noble Maersk uh, merger, which ended up including some acquisitions by Shelf North Sea. Um, but as Matthew mentioned in his part of the presentation, we have seen a couple of the new build drill ships get picked up. And I expect we'll see some more of that before the year is out, not just the drill ships, but some new build jackups as well. There's a lot of interest in those units. So yeah, I think we won't see as many as last year, but we'll still see some individual uh, targeted transactions. I've got a couple of questions around uh, sort of forecast on West Africa. So um, recent discoveries in Namibia, how has that affected mm -hmm. the outlook for West Africa? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, incre we've, uh, Shell's had a, announced a number of recent discoveries in Namibia's Orange Basin. They're currently conducting a drilling campaign there. And uh, Total Energies is also following up from some of their previous discoveries there. So it's been, the Orange Basin in Namibia has been introduced, um, been generating a lot of interest, um, especially after the uh, after these recent discoveries. So what we're seeing now is um, multiple uh, companies planning further activity in the region. We're seeing rigs being built, uh, being bid aggressively into jobs in Namibia or for programs in West Africa with Namibia as one option. So we should see an increase in new units working there. Um, and uh, I think what's also interesting to note is Orange Basin typically requires uh, high spec units and in some case harsh environment units. So that's going to be pulling from the uh, same pool as uh, a lot of the rigs that we've seen recently in high demand. Okay. 
Just one last one before we close the, the 30 minutes is uh, switching regions to the Middle East. We had a question regarding, um, is it common now with the tight supply that operators are paying for jack-up movement, for, you know, re relocation and reactivation fees? Mm -hmm. um, I can take that for you, Paul. Um, the answer to that is, is basically it depends on where we are in the cycle. Um, this is a very cyclical industry. As, uh, as the market tightens and availability comes less, then yes, the operators do typically take on some of those um, additional costs of moving it or reactivating it, for instance. But then as demand comes down, we'll, that's an opportunity. We'll see maybe for, in exchange for some deals, then the tran uh, rig contractor would cover the transit or reactivation if need be. And then again, like when we hit the bottom of the market and things are very, very low, then in that case, the uh, rig contractors would need the operators to um, pay for any sort of mobilization or reactivation. So it's cyclical and just kind of depends on where we are in the market at that point in time. And right now, it's at the point where um, operators are needing to pay for more of these additional uh, fees. Thanks very much, Cinnamon, Matthew. So, so some great presentations there. So we're really at the end of the allotted time. So just a couple of housekeeping ones, just to confirm um, we have recorded today's session. Um, so we'll be reaching out to everyone um, later this week where we post the, um, the recording and a copy of the slide decks to everybody. I'd like to thank everybody again for, for taking the time of attending uh, today. And um, this confirms and concludes the end of today's presentation. Thank you, everybody.